So what would you say are, or what is the type of management training that you employed to make sure that your, the leaders that you worked with actually embraced some of the things that you just talked about and that they were able to coach in that way and actually lead in that way to help their organizations be successful? Yeah, well, we used, um, you know, most of the, the work that uh, we did was, you know, developed early on by thinking of uh, Ed Shine at MIT. I happened to partner with a company called Box of Crayons. I've worked with for over a decade, which teaches um, the behaviors of being coach-like. So it's not a matter of some big esoteric shift I have to make. It's, it's having some questions like, okay, well, what's, what's the challenge there? And then what else? And what else? And allow me to continue to ask questions and be comfortable with that. So we, we don't tell people to do that. We practice it. Um, I'll never forget having a, a very senior executive and an administrative assistant practicing this coaching. And we told them, use a real situation. Don't make something up, don't play act, don't role play. And we got done, we did the debrief, and I said, how was that? And he raises his hand, which was kind of cute. And uh, he said, I've been struggling with something for nine years that she just helped me solve in seven minutes. And he goes, I realize now that coaching doesn't mean everyone has to be a coach, it means everyone can, and we need this kind of culture in our organization, we'd solve a lot of problems. And an admin and an executive leader. Yes. Tell us about how that mix happened. Because we mixed people up. We put them in pairs and we basically said we have a goal of you're going to work with everybody over the course of these two days. You know, the, the, the design of training, the symbolism of place, the movement. Um, a friend of mine says it's not about the content, it's about the audience. And I definitely believe that to be true. Now, if you have horrible content, it's not going to be do too well. If you've engaged an audience, and have nothing to give them. But you can have great content, and if your audience or your group isn't ready to use it uh, or receive it and, and play around with it, question it, doubt it, put it to practice, then you're not going to get anywhere, which you know, also leads to it. It's got to be experiential. I think the key difference, if they'd role-played you know, Timmy and Tammy having a conversation about something mundane, they would have forgotten about it by now. Everybody in that room remembers, all 40 of those people remember what he said and remembered that moment because it was real, because it was experiential. It wasn't just a, a classroom sort of faux thing.